the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Sophie Wessex is said to be relieved that she no longer has to curtsy to Meghan Markle after Sophie was elevated to Duchess of Edinburgh. A friend told the Daily Mail, Sophie is relieved. She no longer has to curtsy to someone in the family who has not only left royal duties, but has spent the past three years criticising the institution that Sophie works so hard to support. Sophie recently spoke to the Sunday Times and said, Remember, I've had five years to adjust to royal life, and for our six-month engagement I was even staying at Buckingham Palace. Not that you necessarily know how it will pan out. The Mirror's royal editor, Russell Myers, said, The similarities between Sophie and Meghan are there to be seen. Sophie's working with girls' education. She's done a lot of stuff about violence against females in Africa. Are the Instagram generation going to be as obsessed with Sophie and Edward Wessex as they are with the Sussexes? Obviously not. However, when you're dealing with them, Sophie's really across her subject matter. It's not just for show. With the Sussexes not here, the Wessexes will undoubtedly benefit. Edward recently shared why he doesn't shake hands with the public. I've been trying to avoid it, and if I do it once, then I get everybody doing it. A friend of Andrew's says the prince is in despair. He's been left completely in the dark. Andrew's a member of the family, for God's sake. Yet he had no idea this was coming. What is he meant to do? Go cap in hand to his older brother to keep a roof over his head? Things are going from bad to worst. It's a disaster. The Mirror reports King Charles is reportedly refusing to pay Prince Andrew's £32,000 a year bill for a healing guru. The King has told his brother that he will have to use his own money for that. Sources say Andrew has been using the Indian yogi for a number of years and helps with his chanting, massages and holistic therapy in the privacy of his mansion. Andrew may be considering a tell-all with American television, the source claims. Andrew has been made to give up his job and now potentially his home. He feels there is little else to lose when he has already paid an awfully high price. Charles himself may be on the move in a few years. There is talk that the king may move into Buckingham Palace once the refurbishment is complete. The Mirror reminds us Buckingham Palace has 775 rooms, including 19 state rooms, 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 188 staff bedrooms, 92 offices and 78 bathrooms. This new report contradicts previous reporting when Insider had told the Sunday Times he doesn't see it as a viable future home or a house that's fit for purpose in the modern world. He feels that its upkeep, both from a cost and environmental perspective, is not sustainable. Another source suggests Camilla doesn't want to live there either. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Hey, hey, it's Jordan Ross Myers, the man behind Twitter's notorious Lee Radswell and Don Gunvalson. I'm inviting you to join me every week for the Pretty Corrupt podcast. Along with my co host, reality casting director Stacey Noel Connor, and disgraced entertainment TV producer Nate Safer, we deconstruct pop culture's past, present, and future and probe the dark crevices of Hollywood taking you inside the scandals, feuds, rises and falls of society's rich and infamous. Alongside interviews with our celebrity friends and special guest hosts, everything is fair game on the Pretty Corrupt Podcast. Every Tuesday on all streaming platforms and at storicmedia.com. One name you don't want to be associated with is Hitler. A recently uncovered letter reveals Edward VIII's, that's the king that abdicated in season one of The Crown, Edward's adoration of Hitler. Historian Alexander Lyman found a draft of the letter from 1937 and said, If he hadn't been the king, I am sure he would have gone to prison. He was a Nazi sympathizer to the extent that it complicated his loyalties, his actions, at worst, were purely treasonous. The letter reads, The Duchess of Windsor and I would like to thank you sincerely for the great hospitality you have shown us and for the many options you gave us to witness all that has been done for the working people of Germany. Our trip through Germany has made a great impression on us and we won't forget the attentiveness you surrounded us with and the warm welcome we received everywhere. Lahman said the visit was planned to promote Edward's interest in how the Nazis had improved the lot of the ordinary working man and gave Hitler a propaganda triumph. Edward was all too willing to go along with it. He believed he would be treated with more respect and dignity within Germany than he had been with his home country since the abdication. Winston Churchill himself was concerned enough to draft a letter to the Commonwealth Prime Ministers in early July 1940. 
It stated, The activities of the Duke of Windsor on this continent in recent months have been causing H.N., George V, and myself grave uneasiness, as his inclinations are well known to be pro-Nazi, and he may become a centre of intrigue. We regard it as a real danger that he should move freely on the continent. Edward's official biographer, Philip Ziegler, explains that during this time the Nazis butted the Duke. Warman says, he was always meeting with the wrong people, in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's why he was sent to the Bahamas, because he was such a risk. He was an enormous threat because he was being used as a puppet and being persuaded to move away from the royal family, to denounce what they've done and to be publicly treasonous. If he had found the right money and had the right people around him, I'm sure he'd gone much further. He wasn't a clever man, but he could be quite cunning. That shouldn't be underestimated. Speaking of the Nazis, Prince Harry's controversial Nazi costume and the outrage it caused will reportedly be featured in the next season of The Crown. An insider told The Sun, It is one of the most shameful incidents in Harry's life and one that he finally addressed in December. Older generations will remember The Sun's Harry the Nazi story and shocking photo, but the episode in The Prince's life may come as news to Netflix many younger viewers. In more recent times, Harry has made claims about racism in the UK and unconscious bias in the royal family on Netflix. It is kind of ironic that Netflix is the one to bring up this incident. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, even YouTube, music, or your podcast app of choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times.